without the investment in education, training, that will give you the energy required for entrepreneurship. Education is energy, entrepreneurship, and evolution. And those are the four E's I wish uh, to be. I do not wish to be pessimistic. And you know how Oscar Wilde is to find a pessimist. Uh, a pessimist is a person who, uh, on entering a room, a smell room, look around for the casket. <laughs> <laughs> we are not pessimists. We, we are not pessimists. But here's the problem. The Caribbean has the lowest level of tertiary enrollment in the entire hemisphere in which we live. The lowest enrollment in higher education in the entire hemisphere is in the Caribbean. Drill down even further. The English speaking Caribbean has the lowest enrollment in the Caribbean and in the hemisphere. The Spanish speaking Caribbean, the Dutch speaking Caribbean, the French speaking Caribbean have a higher percentage of tertiary students than the English. We are at the bottom in the English speaking Caribbean of the hemisphere. We are in a hemisphere where the average enrollment is about 35% of the age cohort. The age cohort 18 to 30. 18 to 30, that cohort. The average in the hemisphere is about 35%. In North America, it is 55% and rising. In Latin America, it is 35% and rising. In the Caribbean, we are less than 20%. In fact, in the English-speaking Caribbean, it's about 10%. It's about 10% in the English speaking Caribbean, the percentage of our young people who are enrolled in a tertiary education system. The lowest recovery in this hemisphere coming out of this recession is in the English speaking Caribbean. So, why is that? Are there any surprises? Give up all I just said. Are there any surprises that we are the most sluggish part of the hemispheric economy to come out of the recession? That's the market is bouncing out, Spanish carbon is bouncing nicely. North America is growing, anemic growing, like is growing. We in the English speaking subsector, the most sluggish response, because we have the lowest enrollment in education, because we have the lowest enrollment in tertiary and export. And therein lies our predicament. And our tourism sector is being affected by all of this. There is a shortage of imaginative proposals with creative options to attract that capital. And I, have, I share it just in your view. Even in the university, we have said there is no shortage of capital in the Caribbean to fund education. The question is whether you can make an argument, whether you can make an argument that is attractive to those who imagine both financial and and economic returns for that investment. A minister, the, the transformation of the Cape of Campus, which we have tried to pursue, was predicated on that assumption that there is no shortage of capital for higher education. But you need to sell the importance of higher education to everyone in such a way that they will buy it. And then they will, the resources will follow. In other words, my view is that capital follows ideas. And that is the relationship on which we work. And so try changing culture. Try changing the country's culture. Mm -hmm. I would wish each one of you to settle on a personal project. I'm going to change the culture of China. Change that culture. I'm going to change the culture of Jamaica or, or Britain. You you cannot change the culture of a society. It cannot be done. It is too complicated a set of beliefs and values and practices and attitudes and history. It is too complicated. You can, you can accelerate this evolution. You can accelerate this evolution. What a waste of time imagining you can change it. You can promote certain features of it. You can highlight some features and suppress some features 
and you can play with it like a jigsaw puzzle. You can play with components of it, and that is what we are we are trying to do. Culture, culture is concrete, and if I say that again, that culture is concrete. I want you to imagine that and then ask yourself, how then do you change concrete? <laughs> you can chip away. And you could, and this is not meant to be a pun, but you can get bolder. <laughs> um, you can find a source of energy to explode it. And therein lies, uh, I think, my thesis. That you need a source of energy to explode that one. And the only source of energy that is available to you is education. It's, it's the only source of energy that is available education. had a conversation with uh, an employee at one of the best-known hotels in the Caribbean. And I thought that his work was so exemplary that I needed to chat with him for a minute to find out what it was that made him tick. And he said a couple of important things to me. First of all, he said that we get trained here four times a year at this hotel. The second thing is that the training is mandatory. If you want to keep working here, you have to participate in the training. And then he said I think, something that I really never expected him to say. And his own words, he said, but the training you get is good for you for the rest of your life. He was an employee who said, got it. He got the point that his employer is doing something that is helping to develop him as a person and to give him an asset that is transferable and long lasting. Not just about that first job, it's about him, it's about developing him, that resource as a person. So the more we all focus on creating a healthy, fulfilling, and enjoyable work environment, the more productive we all will be. And yes, employees do bring a range of variables that help to determine the success or otherwise of that employer employee relationship, but the weight of the responsibility to create the right work environment rests largely on the shoulders of the employers. Every employer needs to recognize that there is truth in the saying that people often don't leave their job. They leave their supervisor. They leave their boss. If you dislike your boss, you dislike your job. <laughs>